happy. Great. Okay, so let us uh, let us begin. I want to welcome everybody back. I hope you had a, a restful summer, and here we are. So welcome to our September Executive Committee meeting. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Laura Spalter. I'm chair. Um, we'll begin our agenda with approval of the Executive Committee minutes from June 1st. Um, are there any questions? The minutes have been distributed. Okay, um, is there anyone opposed to approving the minutes? Is there anyone abstaining? Okay, so they are unanimously approved. Then we have the uh, executive committee minutes of June 23rd. Um, are there any questions? Um, is there anyone opposed to approving the minutes? Anyone abstaining? Okay, unanimously approved. Um, Rob, why don't you take attendance now, which we should have done first. Okay. So um, uh, from the top, Sylvia Alexander. Present. Uh, Bob Bender. Here. Kelly Buford. Present. Lisa Daub. Present. Nick Fazio. Here. Uh, David Gelman. Uh, present, but I missed the uh, votes. Okay. Uh, do, do. Julia Gomez. Okay. Rosemary Ginty. Present. Ed Green. Present. Charles Merdler. Yep. Omar Murray. Camelia Tepelis. I saw uh, Camelia's picture. Yeah, I see her right there. Yes, present. Thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> Laura Spalter. Present. Stephen Vasquez. Present. Sergio Villaverde. Uh, Marty Walpoff. Present. And Joy Campbell Prevater. Here. Okay. And so just going back quickly, Julia Gomez. Yet. Omar Murray. Sergio Villaverde. No. Okay. Okay. So, um, David. Do you approve the minutes of June 1st? Uh, oh, yes. Thank and you. And have at the oh, okay. 23rd. Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, so the minutes for both are unanimously approved. Thank you, David. Okay, okay um, I'll give a brief chair's report. Um, first, I must say that uh, we were all very saddened by the news of Karen Pesh's death. And Karen was a valued and um, dedicated community board member and a friend to many of us. And her, her service and her, um, she always reached out. She always got the job done. Uh, she had served as secretary. She had served as chair of the aging committee and we will miss her. And uh, that's, that was the sad news for me for the summer. Um, we're gonna have our award ceremony at seven o'clock for the Irving Latimer Community Service Award and the Most Valuable Merchant Award, and also a youth award. Um, we're setting up at seven because the Y won't let us in before 620 and we need uh, that time to set up for the hybrid. Uh, so that's why you generally we would be starting at 630. But, so I hope to see you all there. Uh, several board members attended today's press conference with Assemblyman Dinowitz and Councilman Dinowitz uh, on the redesign of Riverdale Avenue. Um, a DOT representative is coming to TNT &T on September 15th. Now, of course, the plan is already done, but this offers us the opportunity to give some feedback on how it's working. And uh, we hope that the community will give the board and elected officials um, their feedback on this. And then we could discuss those issues with the DOT rep on the 15th. Um, today, it, there was a, a bad accident in front of Skyview Shopping Center. It seems that a car careened 
off the street and onto the sidewalk, right into the middle um, divider that where the cars park in the shopping center. So there was the fire department, there was a police department. Um, I, I don't know more than that. It's just uh, Kira took some pictures and, and sent it. Um, so we, you know, thank God nobody was hurt. If somebody was walking on the sidewalk, this was in the afternoon, was sitting on the bench that was right near it, it could have been a disaster. Um, so that's what we know. So we, we do want different feedback. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> a little update on the new office. We have a new transaction manager from DCAS. He has uh, visited us at our office. Uh, DCAS is engaging with our preferred site that we discussed back in June. And, um, you know, the bureaucracy and the timeline, 20 months without even the construction, is so baffling. The bureaucracy is just so long, the process. So I did write to all our elected uh, officials and the New York City Council members who are on the Government Operations Committee uh, regarding this process and the bureaucracy. And because it was definitely an issue for the old landlord, and I can imagine it'll be an issue for any landlord, uh, the length of time. So. Uh, we will be following up with that. Okay, um, the school construction authority is a very big issue. I know Chuck will speak about it tonight. I know Sylvia will speak about it tonight. Um, I just wanna say that we've been advocating for school in Kingsbridge for decades. And as you know, SCA came to the land use committee on December 7th and the education committee on December 22nd, uh, the education committee was um, actually uh, uh, representing the board. Uh, the board approved the site for the location of the school along with District 10 Education Committee and the City Council. Um, we received an environmental review in NEGDEC on June 24th, which was a Friday after hours. And um, there is a four month common period. Uh, Sylvia and I uh, planned a public hearing on September 29th. Uh, we invited the School Construction Authority, but um, they declined, saying that they will furnish answers to our questions and comments. Um, in our resolution, they said, we said, when we sent it, approving that they would come back uh, for the uh, construction and site plan and you know everything. And they did say they will when they declined this invitation that they, they don't attend meetings on neg deck, they said. Um, our purpose is to share information that we have on the neg deck with the community, uh, our comments. And from last night, we certainly have a lot of comments um, and then send everything to them, make it official. Um, Chuck drafted a letter today. Uh, I know he'll speak about that. The, I saw the elected officials at the uh, press conference this morning. And of course, I spoke to them. I had already spoken to them about this issue and they're going to write uh, SEA. Um, it's clear that um, the communities will be impacted. Uh, okay, I have other things I could say, but I will wait. I'm sure we'll have a continued discussion. Um, and that is, uh, that is my report. Any questions? Um, yeah, Madam Chair, we're going to talk about this later in the meeting. Yeah, I think so. Okay, okay. I fine. think Chuck will want to talk, so we want to talk. I just wanted to give a little update. Okay. Okay, so uh, we'll move on to the Treasurer's Report. Joy. All right. Good evening, everyone. This is the Treasurer's Report for September 22nd. Um, I'm sorry, well, I should say September fiscal year 2023. Uh, the budget for fiscal year 23 is $259,208. Okay, and this includes an allocation uh, by council member Carmen De La Rosa in the amount of 2,500. Uh, the board will determine how that money is spent at a later date and 
I uh, welcome all input as to ideas about how that uh, how those money should be spent. In terms of the personal services, the budget is 219-117. Uh, other than personal services, just over 40,000. Of that amount, uh, 31,974 has already been allocated, leaving $225,969. And as always noted, the allocated includes money spent as well as encumbered, waiting on purchase orders, et cetera. Uh, 1.1 other that's the itemized other than personal services detail and again the budget is $40,091 uh, out of which 1265 has been allocated leaving a total of 38,826. Item 1.2 there are no budget mods. Item 1.3 um, you see that 2523 has already been encumbered. Okay. Uh, item 1.4, rent and energy detail. The budget is 67451. Um, the allocated amount, it looks a lot, but the monies have already been allocated for the year. So it's 65889 with 1562 remaining. And the final page, this is uh, from last year, just to use as a guide, uh, the operational budget versus the actual. So if you scroll down to the bottom, it, may, it says uh, 23,574 uh, was spent as opposed to 39,253 being budgeted. So that's, just over, well, to be exact, it's 15,679 uh, monies that gave that we gave back. And that is the treasurer's report for September. Uh, I have a comment I'd like to make. Um, I, oh. I, I would like to correct the record. Uh, in June, I said uh, that we had discussed the Marble Hill trees um, at exec. And when I went back, yes, it was in my notes, but it, uh, it got lost in the translation. I misspoke and I just wanted to correct the record that I hadn't discussed that. And uh, you know, moving forward, we have um, again, money from Carmen De La Rosa and we have several members of the board who live in Marble Hill and we're going to you know, reach out to them and uh, come up with some suggestions and share, uh, share that information going forward. So I just wanted to correct the record. All right. Any other questions for the treasurer? Two hands up. I see Camelia and Rosemary. Okay, Camelia. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Laura. Uh, you are starting to know me very, very well <laughs> because by your comment, you kind of anticipated what I wanted to, to say. Um, and I'm saying here in, in the treasurer's report, just because in our June meeting, uh, Joy wasn't able to attend and, uh, and it was Kira doing the treasurer's report. And I do see in the minutes a point that I consider to be a little bit too thin on the issue that we had with this conversation about $5,000 with the trees. So I would just like to ask for that point, um, to be elaborated a little bit more to for the amount to be put there because as you may remember there was a little bit of a conversation about how this was um distributed who was the vendor all that so if you wouldn't mind um uh joy and laura and kira um how to say putting a, another level of detail to that point in the way it is reflected in the minutes of the full board meeting uh, i would really appreciate it okay we got the five thousand dollars that from Councilman Rodriguez. Um, it was listed you know, on every treasurer's report. Uh, in the spring, we met with uh, the councilwoman who is now the new councilwoman, Carmen De La Rosa. And we discussed uh, the year before, let me say this, we did graffiti removal. We interviewed three graffiti removal companies, 
We spoke about it multiple times. So I, this just went. Yeah, no, Laura, I'm not asking for now. I, I'm just asking if you would please elaborate in writing, just add a sentence or two kind of explaining, putting the amount there, the vendor, just because you just said that it was in fact not discussed in exec before. And I think sort of both me and them well, uh, go question the process. It's, it's, it's going to go in today's minutes. Oh, but, but it should go in the minutes of the June meeting when we addressed it. It is right now, it's a point, it's a very short point, but I'm asking for these details of the amount and the name of the vendor BID. It was a little bit of- Yeah, like, yeah. So but so I, if I'm you wouldn't just, mind. Just, all right, I was just getting- yeah, I'm not just, asking for right now. I'm asking for, for the full board meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Camelia. Any other questions? Rosemary. Uh, yeah, uh, just to uh, reiterate what, what Camelia was saying there, mm -hmm. it, it's the, the minutes as sent to us for the June meeting, there's no discussion whatsoever on the $5,000 or trees and what, nothing. And it's not sufficient to have something in the minutes of this particular executive meeting. It was discussed, if, although briefly, mm -hmm. uh, in the June meeting, it belong, it's some discussion, some writing of what was discussed belongs in the June minutes. Good. So okay. I, I think I'm not, Kim, I, once again, I'm stepping on Camelia's point, but I, I, I hope I'm reiterating. No, that's, per, that's, that's perfectly. Okay. That's perfectly fine. Uh, we will it, add something. The um. Uh, oh, so I, I may have missed it as you were going through the sheets, but the twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, I, I think that's the number you gave from um the council member. Mm -hmm. Where does that show up on the sheets? Uh, did I miss it? Was it there? Yeah. Where does it show up in the budget specifically? Where's the 2500 show up? Because I think that is one, one of the problems. The $5,000 appeared on a sheet given to us by, but there was nothing in the treasurer's report that said $5,000 is going for trees. There was nothing that said that. So I think starting over, we should be able to track the council members' uh, dollars. Got to it. be able to track it. I don't know if that's the right term, but I think you know what I mean. Got so, it. so Joy, I'm sorry. Maybe I missed it as you were going through. Is the $2,500 specifically in the treasurer's report? Yeah, it's in a paragraph form. The budget for FY20, this includes the standard budget allocated to community boards, uh, as well as additional 2,500 allocated by council member Carmen De La Rosa's office. It's it's actually in text. CB8 will need to decide how to spend the special okay, council. Okay, okay, so I, I missed it. Was it, there. it yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's not in a budget line. It's not in any of the charts. It's it, in a power. It will be moving forward. Yeah. Okay. And right will, now, it's it's under the heading one operating budget update. So it's okay. Within, thank you. I missed that. I didn't see it. Thank you. May I just add, um, it's not in any of the reports because it hasn't been encumbered, it hasn't been allocated, but all council funding sits in line 499. I have my budget report here from OMB and it sits in um, budget code 499. So okay. until we do a budget modification, it'll be sitting in 499. And once we decide on how to spend it, we'll shift it out of 499 into the appropriate code. And, and when we're approving that, it should be specified. We are taking $5,000 from this and doing it, it, which it wasn't done. We didn't know what we, we were will. voting on. Okay? We will do so that. Next time we will specifically how that money is, is being spent. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and be aware it was $5,000. We kind of discouraged her because it's a lot of work for us. And then now it's half of that. And maybe uh, subsequently it will be, you know, we'll see how it goes. Okay, Marty, um, Marty. Just want to clarify what's been, been saying. <clears throat> the June minutes should be amended, <clears throat> as pointed out, to indicate that a discussion took place. Okay. What uh, is being asked for relative to today's meeting uh, was not discussed in June. And so that in this month's minutes, both the executive and as it comes up. Both today. Rob, Rob, you got that? My secretary. <laughs> Didn't quite finish yet. So finish, yes. Marty. <laughs> he got interrupted by a, a yell yeah. there. The question is 
that the June minutes need to be amended to say a discussion took place. Yes. And what is relevant to that meeting? Not what took place today because it didn't mm -hmm. happen. Yeah. Room. Yeah. But today's minutes and hopefully what will take place next week at the full board meeting should it clarify all these issues we're speaking about now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Marty. Thank you for that, Marty. Thank you for that, Rosemary and Camelia. Um, absolutely. Seeing no further questions, uh, we'll move on to the district manager's report. Hey, everyone. Good evening. Um, I hope you all had a good summer. I saw many of you at different tabling events. I want to thank you to those who came out for Marble Hill Family Day, the Riverdale Pride event, um, the block party in Marble Hill National Night Out. We even uh, took part of a book bag giveaway, um, helping fill some book bags um, put together the, by the Bronx Burger House. Um, so we're happy to do all of that. And thank you again to all the who volunteered. Um, I just want to give an update on some status changes in with some of our liaisons. I spoke with the Department of City Planning. We still don't have a replacement for Juton. Um, should be starting next week, and I've been told they will start attending our meetings. They're still hiring a Bronx director for the um, Department of City Planning, so I'll keep you all abreast of um, what's going on there. I don't remember if I even reported that Juton has moved over to director of planning at the Bronx Borough President's Office. Um, Joe Coluccio, who is our Do It star, had left in February. They just replaced him. I met our new contact yesterday. So we were kind of um, dealing with some tech issues over the summer. We finally got them all fixed um, as of yesterday. Um, so I wanna thank Tanya and Pablo, uh, for working with me and trying to just figure out some of these issues we were having with our printer and, and so on and so forth, um, because we just obviously couldn't wait the whole summer for Do It to come. Um, Tom Lucania has shifted over to senior advisor to the Bronx Borough President, so they will be hiring a new director of community boards. Um, Tom has assured me that he'll still help us out <laughs> during this process because we do depend on him in that office a lot. Um, I've sent out the schedule for budget consultations and I've been sending out different agendas. We still have not received the links from OMB. So once we, we get those links for the team meetings, I'll be sharing it with all of you. Hopefully that's soon. 95% um, of the board members have completed the sexual harassment training. Um, if you haven't done so, please reach out and we'll do our best to help you out. Um, the staff also had to complete sexual harassment training. Um, by the end of August. Um, we've been working really closely with Sanitation NYPD about some of these 18 wheelers and illegal dumping along the Deegan and Van Cortlandt Park. It's in one of those areas where it's covered by multiple precincts, multiple sanitation districts. Um, so luckily our districts have been really helpful with that. Um, the office played an integral role in connecting DOT with building management and getting the Johnson Avenue light put up over the summer, um, where it was tragic that Ruth Mullen last year passed away. So luckily that light is installed and hopefully it's a safer intersection for everybody. Um, the council is currently working on dealing with abandoned restaurant sheds. So council member Dinowitz is looking for us to report on any abandoned sheds that we see and they'll go work with um, the merchant, see kind of what has to happen there. So if, if there's any in your neighborhood, luckily I don't think we have too many of them. I know there's a lot in the city that they're having issues with in Manhattan. Um, but if you see any abandoned ones around your neighborhood, please just um, report back to me and we'll send it over to Councilman Dinowitz's office. Um, I think that's all I have to report on. Um, I look forward to working with you all again this year. Thank you. Thank you, Kira. Thank you. I have a question. Could I ask a question? Of course. Um, that light that you're talking about where the poor woman was uh, killed, is that on Oxford Avenue? No, I'm talking about Johnson. Oh, 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 uh, uh, near the Cut highway. at Johnson. Yeah, K Park and Johnson. Sorry. I see. Is anything being done about the uh, four-way stop sign or 
better uh, signage um, yeah, at, I, um, at Oxford and, and 235th Street? Yeah, I, when I spoke to you, DOT actually didn't even know about that fatal accident um, and they were going to study it again, but I believe that became a four-way safe zone, I think they call it, in 2018. So um, DOT said that was fairly re recent, but they were going to go back out and look and to see what could be done. It, it needs to be looked at again. Them notes from our conversation. It's my corner, and uh, every time you want to go across to Key Food or uh, reverse to, from um, Key Food to Walgreens, you take your life in your hands. So um, when that happens, could you let me know? Because I'd like to be out there. Absolutely. Thank you. A representative from TNT will be at our uh, meeting on the 15th. Why don't we ask them to come prepared to talk about that? Good, thank you. Sure, good idea, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, I have a question sure. for Kira. I'm not sure it goes uh, to Kira. You tell me where the question should go. The um, the restaurant issue that you raise, um, it, it's a very big one. And, and we remember that the court threw it out. The court said you should have done uh, an environmental review. You remember we mm -hmm. yes that like yes. okay. And I think at that point, I may be wrong. I think here you were going to follow up and see what were the, was the city going to appeal? Were they going to start a new environmental review? Were they going to change what 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 were they okay. going to do? I, I, do I have some info. Happened? I don't know, okay. Kira. You may have some info. I have some info. Um, the last step was after. The judge said they needed to do an environmental impact. That's where it lay because the city has not done an appeal. They had said they were going to appeal it, but that hasn't really? happened as far as I know. The secondly, there's a second lawsuit that um, has not been adjudicated yet, but it was a group saying that this was an emergency measure and the uh, government had no right to make it a permanent measure. Uh, so there are two lawsuits, and we have heard nada. They only have 30 days to appeal from okay. the seats of the judgment. If they haven't done it, goodbye, have a nice day. Okay, they haven't done it. That's what I, I, very good. That's good. So as far as we know, DOT has, they've done, DOT has done nothing, right? There's been, there. they have done nothing. They have okay. not sent any guidance. Okay. They well, Rosie, the, the issue is whether or not the judgment has been entered. That's a simple matter of checking it on the records. If Kiara will remind me tomorrow, I'll have my office check it. Thank you. Um, good. Are there any other questions? All right. I don't think we have any committee resolutions to discuss because it's September. Um, so we will move on to the discussion. There, there is a SAPO resolution coming up. Right, but okay. it hasn't been voted on by committee. Uh, Lisa, do you want to speak? Yeah, I could bring it up during miscellaneous or new business yeah. or whatever. Okay. Right. Um, and we have um, discussion of the- Nora, excuse me. Sorry, I just- <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry, Camille, you, you raised your hand. I didn't see it. Yeah, no, no, sorry. I just, I'm not sure if it's appropriate at this point of resolutions, but um, there is an issue. I'm just not sure if uh, I should raise it now in resolutions, but, or in other members' issues, but it will turn into a resolution. Um, if, 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 would if, you if, give if, me if, permission what? to address it now or later? Uh, later, if that's okay. 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 Sure, Are the sure. committee Thank Thank member you. issues for discussion? Um, we'll complete the agenda as it is. Um, I want to say as we get to the budget, and I hope everybody had a chance to review the list, um, Kira has done uh, uh, a lot of outreach to all the agencies to check on how our budget items are landing. And uh, she has spoken to many chairs over the summer. And so, she, you know, Kira, you may want to interject anything now or as we review the list, you want to put the list up? Again, we're, we're voting on this in October after the public hearing uh, on the budget. Okay, so it's still early in the game. 
Yeah, and um, you know, I spent some time this summer reaching out to different agencies um, on the responses from last year. And following up, you know, a lot of the responses are reach out to the council, reach out to the borough office for more information. So I spent a lot of time doing that. And I also reached out to them regarding some of our new requests um, because we tried to submit 20, 25, 30 requests. We have more than that. So um, I've spoken, or a lot of you have seen my emails with agencies. And I think we do have some opportunities to combine or um, remove some of these requests and make them letters, meetings, um, things like that. So that's something we can talk about. It's obviously totally up to the executive committee. Um, but here I have the capital budget request. Um, if I may, before you start, I just wanted to comment uh, to underscore what Kira did this summer. Uh, I think six or eight or 10 times this summer, I was CC'd on emails where uh, Kira followed up on rather mediocre replies from the agencies. Yeah, it's a good idea, or we'll see what we can do, or we'll, we'll try to fudge this or that, but never actually said anything. And she followed up with them and said, okay, so what did you actually mean by such and such? And I think that that is an, an important uh, step forward for us uh, to get us closer to getting things done under the budget. And I thank you for uh, following up on all those lots of loose ends that they left for us. Thank you. We, we also are meeting with the elected officials on their budgets. You know, we have one uh, lined up with um, uh, Rivera. Why is the first name? Gustavo. All right. Uh, uh, Senator. And did, we did, did, we, yeah. did we find a date? I thought we were still up in the air on that. Yeah, we, we're still um, up in the air. We're okay, still up very in good. The air, so and, and <laughs> right, we did meet with the councilman a couple of weeks ago. Yes. Yeah. And we met with the parks department. So we're we're chugging along here. Um and oh. so I don't know who's gonna run any, this, but any capital. Any comments? Or at this juncture, I'll turn it over to David, budget chair, uh, for anyone's comments. We we do we can ask questions on, on this on this list, right? Yeah, yes. yeah, okay. comments. Okay, we're waiting for David to say. No, no, no. I mean, uh, well, Kira's put up the capital budget. Um, okay. I, I only have one minor comment on the expense budget, but um, uh, this is what we talked about um, in May uh, and tentatively uh, prioritized. And the whole idea was for the summer, over the summer, that each of the chairs would look at it and see if they had any um minor or major comments about it but the consensus that we left that meeting with uh was essentially this is where how we would like to go forward uh or at least as a starting point and uh, i we we uh, welcome comments at this point so I, I just have a couple of questions would that be okay just to please yeah, now? please is that okay that's the purpose so, um, I look at um, item 23 and item 28, and they look the same to me. I'm, I'm, if, if, if there's a, a difference, I, I just, I'd like to understand what the difference, 23 and 28. 23 is. Let me see if I can zoom out and we can see them all. It's, it's a study of safe pedestrian bicycle connections to Putnam Greenway from Bailey yes, Avenue and from they Broadway. Are identical. 28 is. Study safe pedestrian bicycle connections to Putnam Green A from Bailey and from Broadway. It just it essentially you, the same, yes. Oh, okay. Except for the sponsor, the sponsor committee. So okay. we yeah. just have to see if both these committees want to go in on this together, and we'll just list it as one. So it, it would save a number. Well, anyway, that's, absolutely. That's, that's yeah. my question. Okay, it would um, save a number. Uh, uh, number eight, is that not an expense budget item? Again, maybe you, you looked into this and, dis, and, and determined it's not expense, but it, it reads like an expense budget item to me. You know what? Um, Omar's not here to answer this. Um, I don't know if there was a reason why he put it on, ex, on capital. Mm -hmm. 
um, but we can look into that. Unless you thought it was more than $35,000. That's the only thing I can think of, uh, you, but your, Ed, Ed, your Ed, question Ed, is, is valid. Ed, um, okay. do you have something um, to say on this? If I, if I recall correctly, we had this conversation and for the domestic, there, there's a lot of resources involved. So yeah, it's gonna be pricey. I think that's why it got on the uh, capital uh, budget because uh, just looking at it, it, it seems like it will be pricey. There's nothing that that's not set in stone, but that's where we are. And if if I remember correctly, it was expense in previous years, but OMB switched it when we submitted it to capital. So I feel if I remember correctly, I feel like that's why. Um, but we can certainly look into that. It's it, it just, just to point out that the expense is almost irrelevant that the capital uh, whatever you're purchasing with that money has to last for 35 years. I don't see what we're building or purchasing here that lasts for 35 years. That's why I, uh, anyway, I just, so you're looking at the expense. Right. Again, okay. for some uh, uh, peculiar, arbitrary reason, we have been told it, over the years that they have a dividing line of $35,000 uh, yeah. between expense and capital. And, and your definition is the classic definition that I've always used in any corporate uh, uh, or government setting, but that is what they have said to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but, but I think that Kira's uh, approach is the, uh, is the way we should go, is just to double check the, the rationale there and any historic movement by the agency. <clears throat> okay, so, so kind of the, the last question is item number four. It's uh, re reconstruct a step street and include green infrastructure. If you go to item nine, all of those are reconstruct step streets and include infrastructure. Uh, is there a particular reason why this stands out as an independent item and not listed in the list number nine list? Do you see what I'm saying? No? Which number? I'm sorry. Uh, num number four. four is reconstruct a step street and include uh, a green infrastructure to capture stormwater. If you turn to number nine, it's a whole list of step streets that are, that are uh, reconstructing the step street, including green infrastructure to reduce flooding. It's the exact same language. So is it, it, uh, my question is, should number four just be one other uh, on, on the list in number nine? If I may, the the uh, the difference between number four and the items under number nine, yeah, is to reconstruct the entire intersection, not just the step street, uh, to create a pedestrian plaza there. So it's a much more ambitious project than reconstructing the step streets. That's why it's broken out. Okay, I see. So that's what separates it from from the other list. That, that's correct. Thank, thank the you. latter one is really a repair. This one is a reimagining. Okay. Okay, then I get just as from a personal point of view, I, I think number four and six should be switched. Number six is Fort Four that has been on our list for some time. It is a more ambitious and longstanding <clears throat> um, uh, priority of this community board, and quite frankly, serves a lot of people in that neighborhood. Um, a pedestrian plaza at Bailey Avenue, um, uh, to me, just doesn't rise to the same level as Fort Four Park that has been on our list for some time. So just as, uh, just as a, a suggestion or a thought, four and six maybe should be switched because of, because of their uh, gravitas. You know what? I think that the lists were made um, according to the order the committee put them in at that juncture, uh -huh. but uh -huh. now we're looking at it as a holistic way. Uh -huh. So um, to, the, to the chairs of TNT, uh, Kelly and Parks, do you agree with changing four and six? Well, as the interim chair of Parks, um, I have an interim uh, opinion on the matter. Um, the, 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 issue, the issue with uh, Belly Avenue and Van Cortlandt South is that it is a very complex intersection. Anybody who's crossed there should know about that, uh, just how difficult the crossing that intersection is. And it's the entrance to the park, uh, to the golf house, 
It's also the entrance to the northbound Deegan. It's a very complicated intersection. And if this was strictly a parks issue, I would agree completely with Rosemary on switching them. But because of the TNT component, I see that it has a, a very significant impact on the community. And I think the, uh, the ordering, look, I mean, reasonable people can disagree. But I think that the, uh, the order that we have now is correct. Okay, so uh, thank you, Bob. And thank you for this whole discussion. Uh, are there any other hands up? I don't see any, so we'll move to the um, expense budget. Sorry, Laura, I um, just wanted to chime in here and uh, recommend that uh, budget and the community board reflect on the mapping that SRI did um, at the end of last fiscal year. Um, yes, a we number are of these. To do that. Oh, yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank a you. number of projects right. on here that are repetitive. Um, and so I would ask that those projects that have been, there's at least five that have, you know, that we put in the um, top five category because they had been on our request list since at least fiscal year 16. That's as far back as we went. Um, so looking at those top five priorities, which again are on this um, FY24 list um, and make sure that we're prioritizing those um, and, and looking at the additional requests that have been on our list for quite some time. Um, at this juncture, uh, we sent out that list, correct, Kira? Yes, yes. I sent that yes. out. Um, yes, yes. Um, before we leave Capitol, uh, can we put it up on the screen? And thank you, Margaret. I had that on my sure. list and I skipped it over. Give me just one second. Sure, because that was uh, remarkable. Can you guys see this? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Now? Yes. Okay. Okay. And uh, Margaret, we'd be honored if you'd speak to it. Sure. Um, I can't see the, the entire map, but yeah. basically the committee went back from fiscal year 16 to fiscal year 23. Um, and we mapped um, by the color code, we mapped all of the, for the most part, the capital requests. And we wanted to at least understand where our requests were coming from, from the community board, um, what fell off the list or perhaps was addressed. And so no longer continued to stay on our list of frequently requested items. Um, and, uh, then we also wanted to understand what were the biggest priorities within the community board. So as you can see, a lot of the priorities, you know, I can't necessarily direct causation or correlation, but um, a number of the requests are in the Kingsbridge area of the district. And, you know, that leads to a lot of questions on one, you know, sort of like, a number of pressing infrastructure, underinvestments, lack of investments, some parks that had been requested um, to be addressed. You know, Bailey Playground is, I think, top of everyone's list, um, continues to be on our requests. Um, Washington's Walk, um, the NYCHA facilities investing in HVAC and the boiler. Um, and all those sort of pressing needs. Um, there's a number of requests around um, Van Cortlandt Park uh, for the daylighting of Tibbetts Brook. Then there's a, a number of requests around Ewan Park um, and the area near um, uh, Marble Hill where there's a lot of concern about runoff and those sorts of things. So I think that the community board by um, its actions every year and by the thoughtfulness of each of the standing um, committee chairs has 
uh, pretty frequently said, you know, what are our top concerns, what are our top priorities. And so it led Spree to think about or to ask some questions about where, what could we be doing um, to help some of these projects, one, get some sunshine so that we could be following up with our elected officials on them to understand where they stand on those issues. Um, and then also just to be sure that we're front, you know, putting these priorities at the top of our list. Again, we, Scree took, you know, some liberties just to say, these are the top five um, issue areas that have come up consistently every single year from fiscal year 16 to FY23. Um, and so I think, you know, those are some of our priority areas, one, because they're urgent issues, and two, because they've um, been on our list for such a long period of time that they've been vetted year after year after year. Um, and so we want to be sure that uh, those urgent needs, especially, you know, those in the areas that um, have not been invested in, uh, do receive some attention and, and remain a priority for the community board. Thank you, Margaret. This was um, a real work of love, and I, I'm very proud to see how the capital projects are a, a set aside along the whole uh, district, and uh, it's very well represented, all, all the areas, particularly in the southern part. Um, I Just before we leave capital, the first issue that uh, Rosemary had raised that there were two there were two that seemed duplicate. Is there um, uh, approval to make that one? The, that first item. What was that? Um, it would be um, ENS and TNT. Okay, so. Uh, Camelia and, and Kelly, is it okay if we combine those two? No objection from me if Kelly's okay with it. Kelly? I have no objection, thank you. Okay, so then everything kind of moves up one, you know, it's always good and thank you. Thank you everybody for the discussion. Um, okay, so we'll Laura, move on. Nick's hand is up. Oh, oh, why didn't I see that? Now I see it, okay, Nick. Hi, good evening, Margaret. This is, uh, thank you for doing this. And thank you to your committee. Um, what uh, what program did you use for the mapping? Out of curiosity. What do you mean? What program? Was it GIS, ArcGIS? I mean, I, I'm just curious. How, was it online, GIS online? The reason why I'm asking is, is if in these uh, points that you have, is it if there's an uh, online version of this? Like, how do we know which projects coincide with which points other than the yearly designation? Oh, you mean what, what's the descriptor for each of those points? Correct. Um, I created an Adobe, nothing fancy. Um, if you look at the PDF that um, Kira sent today, if you have mm -hmm. Adobe and you hover over each of those points, it will indicate um, which fiscal year, there we go, thank you, um, and what the request yeah. was. There it goes, yep, okay. All right. Okay, excellent, thank you. I'm going to go through it in more detail. Again, I appreciate it. appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, again, we, uh, we will be taking a quick look at this in October as well. Um, lots of uh, work, lots of hands go into this. Uh, okay, so let's just go uh, to the expense. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Laura, I just want to clarify. You said we're going to look at this in October at exec or at the um, at, budget at hearing? A, we usually put it on at exec as well. And then, of course, at the hearing. In case the, so there's still one more opportunity if somebody has a change. Uh, well, uh, all right, the only thing Am is, I correct, David? You're the, you're the budget. Yeah, well, no, uh, I'm, I'm really uh, focusing on this PDF. I think it's excellent. It's, uh, it shows a lot of work. I think it's very useful, but I think it'd be confusing as hell to have it at the budget hearing. If we if we want to have oh, wait, it- Wait, are you talking about the map, David? Yes, the map. Oh yeah, no, 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 that was just for us. Okay, very good, very good, yeah, enough yeah. said, thank you. Yeah, definitely. But what I'm saying is uh, the, the budget items could be uh, discussed again. I mean, it yes. would be very short, we're discussing it now and you know, yeah, no. Okay, so, uh, 
we had a chance to look at the expense. Yeah, just go to 32. There's a typo. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 231st Street between Broadway and Albany Crescent. Okay. But other than that, uh, it, it looks like what we talked about in, in May, June. Okay, um, any comments or questions? Um, I hope you had I would just a, a side comment. If you look at this list, many of these issues, most of the issues are more than $35,000. My only comment. Thank you, Rosemary. Any other comments? Okay, if there are any thoughts on a, a minor just, thing you know, uh, also I just noticed, uh, COVID should always be capitalized. Uh, uh, on 37, 38, they're inconsistent, but it actually is a, an acronym, not a word. Yeah. Okay, and um, unfortunately Omar is not here, um, but I, okay. uh, I did wanna discuss some of these requests with him. I can do that offline. Okay. All right, if there are no further uh, comments, why don't we go to committee member issues for discussion? Um, we have uh, Chuck, would you like to speak? Sylvia, I know that I said that we were gonna return to that, <clears throat> that big issue. You want, hold on. You wanna talk about the uh, thing last night? Yeah, uh, you know, the school construction authority and any, any, anything that you'd like to add and Sylvia as well. Um, for those who were not at last night's meeting, it was for me an eye-opening event in terms of the absolute lack of any kind of interest on the part of the School Construction Authority to give the board any serious information. Um, in fact, it was so startling to me, I drifted into the comparison between SCA and DOT, and they have a lot in common in terms of their arrogance. Um, what we have here is a very serious situation. Rosemary, at the time that this came up, was pressing as hard as you can imagine to make sure that these folks would come back because they were not providing information. Unfortunately, others on this board did not agree and said, oh, no, they'll come back, they'll come back. Well, they didn't. Um, I have gone now through their EIS or their negative declaration. I think I just knocked myself off. Oh, yeah. um, their negative declaration uh, makes it very clear uh, that they are just skirting this thing. For example, the point was made at that meeting the traffic is a major issue in the area of the proposed construction. And their answer is twofold. We can readjust the lights, the traffic lights, and two, we can keep people from parking on the street. That doesn't solve the problem. It just creates a different one. If you put more stoplights in, the result is the traffic will back up. You've just got to figure out a traffic pattern here that makes some sense. And there isn't a heck of a lot of parking going on there now anyway. There will be when the building is built, uh, but there isn't now. Um, so that's a very troublesome area. Uh, what I did today was I called up uh, the assistant to Gary Rodney, who is the former president of the Housing Development Corporation and runs the affordable housing program for Tishman Spire and spoke to his assistant and said, I need to get two groups of people who have expertise on the board to meet with your folks now so that you folks can know before the time you come back what issues have got to be addressed and addressed in depth. And they've already started working or at least have been in contact thanks to Kira putting the parties together uh, with Bob Fanuzzi and uh, Karen Argenti on environmental aspects uh, that the Bob and Karen have been working on for a while and addressed at the meeting. 
Um, and if uh, Camelia wants to attend that, I'm more than happy to function on getting that done. Um, but the point was to get that process so they understand what the issues are in terms of the water conditions and the like. The next one's clearly got to be parking. Uh, and I spoke today with Dan, and he was supposed to get in touch with uh, the new chair of TNT. Kelly, Kelly's on. Is Kelly on? Yes. I am on, Chuck. And Dan did reach out to me, but unfortunately, um, I haven't had an opportunity to speak with him today. Would you talk to him if you two guys are willing to? Uh, I will have them meet with you to go over the traffic things. If you have a chance before that meeting to read their assessment, uh, their negative declaration, uh, you can get after you get nauseous, you will understand what the problems are a little more specifically. Uh, that'll help inform you on where this thing has to start going in terms of dealing with some really awful traffic issues. Um, so those issues, we were able to move a step forward. The, there are a lot of issues, many more than I thought going into this. And Rosemary was prescient in terms of picking up that this was going to be a serious problem. Um, we had two renderings provided by Tishman Spire. As Rosemary again pointed out, they are far short of the renderings that you get on any other application. I was stunned. They didn't show you uh, curb cuts. They didn't show you a damn thing to speak of, uh, except the bulk and the enormity of the building. That was revealed. What was revealed was very interesting and is really troublesome. And Sylvia and Laura and Kira and I spent most of the day today trying to get it straightened out. We'll get the beginnings of it straightened out. One thing slipped through during the course of the Tishman Spire presentation, and that is the archdiocese did not sell the property to the um, uh, school construction authority. Instead, it made a separate sale of some of the property to um, Tishman Spire, the overwhelming bulk of it, and a portion of it to the School Construction Authority. The two intersected when you looked at the paperwork underneath it to the point that there was an easement involved. Now, come to the easement because I got to explain to you because it's a major problem. Um, the school has no playground area. The school has no open area. The school as pictured to us to date doesn't even have an entrance. All it is is a box on a piece of paper. It's a sliver. My best guess, it's maybe somewhere between 10% and 8% of the entire lot. How are you gonna squeeze 700 kids in there and by the way, they don't even agree in their various filings as to how many kids they're going to be. They vary about 20 kids per filing. Um, maybe that's not unusual, but it's just illustrative of the kind of problem. Most important, there is no indication of space for kids. And these are kids to have play area and the like. So when you dig into the and that's all you got. That's all I got. That's what Rosemary picked up. That's all we got was we'll take care of it. Well, nobody told us anything. Where are you going to put these kids? Answer. They now have figured out that they're going to have, and this comes from the negative declaration, they're going to have a roof playground. Well, there's no reference to how they're going to secure the safety of that or the security of that. And they're going to have an easement. There's no indication where. There's no indication how. And again, nothing on security or safety across a small piece of the center courtyard that was proposed to be part of the Tishman's viability. Um, 
we screwed up. I screwed up. You screwed up in approving this plan when it came to us. It is a disgrace in my view. Um, we, I'll give you an example. The meeting started with people from the community saying, how on earth can the school construction authority be a real estate broker and decide how much it's going to allow a Tishman Spire to build here? Well, it didn't. That was decided by the, uh, the uh, uh, archdiocese, and that was the end of that. So here's where we are. We want this school. Everybody wants this school. The school has not been thought out, and if it has been thought out, it's being kept in somebody's pocket. The school promised, school construction promised, because Rosemary pressed them, promised to come back to the board and report. About five minutes before the meeting yesterday, I learned that they have refused to even show up to answer questions on their own EIS. Today, I drafted a letter which Laura, Ke Laura, Sylvia, and I signed. I don't know if it's gone out yet. Um, pointing out to them um, that they are not being appropriate in the discharge of their responsibilities. In that, they misled the board. They've misled the community. And they've been hiding the ball up and down the line, and it is unacceptable for them to decline. Now, I know that Eric, with whom I've been in touch, and Jeff are both going to lean all over them. Forgive me, just let me make a personal comment. You keep hearing me say I've been in touch with those two. To be in touch with our current state senators is just a waste of a few minutes. She doesn't do it. She's busy elsewhere. Um, the same is true of our congressman. Hopefully, Richie Torres will change that pattern. Uh, I'm not going to comment on the state senator because I'll see what he does. Um, but the point is, those two folks have been carrying all the water for the district. We've gotten some help now from the two new council people that have been added, and they, I think, are going to be very helpful in the long run, especially on those sidewalk sheds and the rest of his stuff. Um, but the bottom line here is SCA doesn't give a damn what we say. Um, and that's going to be a problem for Sylvia of monumental proportions in terms of trying to de develop a school property here that really functions and really does its job. Because the school, in the way it's constructed, I hope you can see this, this is the apartment house. It is a backwards letter C. Here is the school. That's it. The entire middle portion is the property of the apartment house and is not intended, except by way of a 2,500 square foot easement, to be used at all by the school. And it wasn't until somebody asked the question last night, is this going to be permeable? Or is this going to be grass? They haven't figured that out yet. That's one of the issues that Fanuzi uh, and Karen are going to be addressing. This is a huge mess. And I think it behooves each and every one of us, and I hate to lecture, but it behooves each and every one of us, as it behooves me, which is one of the reasons I'm here. I'm uh, not a very frequent visit to exec. Um, that's my fault. Um, it behooves all of us to do something here, we screwed up. We did not pay attention, well, even when Rosemary called it to our attention, this is a very serious project. Now, what makes it more serious, we have been begging for affordable housing in this community, and we're gonna to continue to do so, I hope, at least as long as I'm chair of land use. But the problem is that we've gotta make sure it's done right. Tishman Spire is a huge company. Gary Rodney is somebody who is a superbly able human being. Totally principled, totally dedicated to housing. Fully understands and tried to articulate to the committee last night the variables within affordable housing. What's affordable in the South Bronx 
is more than affordable in Park Avenue. What's affordable in Kingsbridge is not affordable in the South Bronx. But as you may or may not know, and you heard last night, the AMI, which is the area median income, which is the gauge for what is or is not affordable when they build it. The gauge is not just the city of New York, it's Westchester, Long Island, Nassau, Suffolk. So all those high rent areas in Scarsdale and in Larchmont and Harrison determine what the average median income is. Nonsense. How can you fix an average area income for somebody in the South Bronx based on what somebody in Scarsdale makes? Nonsense. So we've got to use another benchmark because the, that benchmark can only be changed at the federal level. And they're busy doing a bunch of other stuff. But I will try and see what I can get across there. Those are the issues here. This is the first of the major areas for um, affordable housing. The numbers are pretty good to write. There's too many uh, studios, but I think we can deal with that when talking to them. Um, the numbers go anywhere from a, a three-family income of between 40,000 and 50,000 to people who make 130. So there's a range within the building. That's good. If you, I'm talking too long, but I want to make it clear to you, this is very important. In every affordable housing, again, Rosemary will remember this. Years ago, we had a battle called ZQA uh, and some other acronym about zoning and what can be done and how we're going to put uh, homeless and the like and everything. Do you know the building that you see? It looks like a, a, a diagonal, a pyramid at the bottom of the West Side Highway in 59th Street. It's owned by a client of mine. That building, which has enormously high rents, has 15% homeless people, formerly homeless people in it. And they have not caused any problems. There hasn't been a, it's been doing this now for over two years, not a single case of a rent problem, any kind of problem. Because the selection has been careful and people have worked together. It's a great idea. But the bottom line is we really have to keep an eye on this. This is, in my view, the single most important thing that we can do to provide racial equity is to give people shelter. People need it. They're not getting it. Most of the, uh, most of the uh, affordable housing that we got in the past three, four years was between 100 and 130 percent of AMI. That's for people who make between 100 and 130 or 140 thousand dollars a year. That's not affordable. Not affordable for a teacher of the like. I should have one more thing. There's a high likelihood that the 50 percent or a good portion of that uh, uh, that housing will go to civil servants, uh, it, whether they be police, fire, and particularly teachers. Um, so that will have an impact on the area. Uh, I've spoken too much on the, that issue. I have one other issue, uh, which is Kingsbridge, but should I wait until you guys get finished torturing me on this one? Um, why don't we uh, finish on this issue? Any other comments? Uh, Sylvia, any other comments on, on this? It's kind of like we got a pig in a poke. I think that expression works here and uh, we're gonna do our best. Um, any other uh, I, I have to really speak up. I didn't speak up sure. last night, although I raised my hand, I wasn't called on, uh, but I, I really feel uh, as the chair of the education committee uh, that uh, took over the uh, land use uh, issue when uh, there was a conflict for uh, Mr. Murder. And I uh, drafted the uh, resolution that was passed for the site only, nothing to do with the school because we were given it uh, in, in doses. Uh, first, the site, we had to check on, uh, vote on, uh, and the council also, 
And then now uh, we don't even have a plan for the school itself. Uh, what they have is a model. There are two models. One is the 736 um, student uh, building, which is what they want to put there. Uh, but they will be deviating from the actual model anyway, because it can't be put up the, the same way. I, I would think that there will be some changes. And the 456, which is a smaller building, uh, which we are not uh, privy to. Um, the the uh, case of the um, playground uh, last night, um, on the easement, that is for the kindergarten children only. Uh, that That is like a, a small token that we were given, uh, like a bone uh, to um, have a little bit of um, playground and, and a little, perhaps some grass greenery. Um, the rest of the children are going to be up on the roof. Uh, how that works, I've never seen that uh, being used but I understand that the SCA does that many, many times. As far as the SCA is concerned, um, I had in my minutes in December that they were not coming back. And unfortunately, there were people on the board that disagreed with me very wholeheartedly and said, of course, they're coming back. Well, guess what? They didn't come back. And I don't think that our letter although it is a very strong letter, will uh, you know, uh, sway them to come back on the uh, negative uh, declaration itself. Uh, that's passed, it's gone, uh, it's at, the horse is out of the barn. Uh, what, the only thing that we can do at this point, uh, I'm not even gonna talk about the, the, um, uh, the affordable housing because I think that building that they showed last night is uh, horrendous, but, um, and, and much too much on, on a lot that is um, the way it's laid out. I, I find that uh, we as a board were um, not so much lied to, but we were not informed. The drawings that they uh, submitted when they came to us, uh, just showed a, a box really on the map that, that represented where the school would be. Um, it was only for the site. I think that, that many of us forget that that's really what we voted on. We did not vote for the school, we voted for the site. And that school situation is still coming up. Uh, I hope that we have a little bit more input at that point, I'm hoping and uh, Perhaps we can change some of the things that we are not happy with, but uh, to uh, push, uh, I mean, I'm not really sticking up for SEA because I've worked with them before at the district office and uh, they are not a good uh, agency to work with. They do what they want to do. But if you go on the site on the computer, it says clearly in black and white that during the um, EAS, unless there's an uh, EIS, uh, there are no public hearings that they deal with the agencies directly and they then come to the conclusion and that goes to the uh, city council and the city council just went with it. So I spoke to Eric before the vote and I asked him to uh, again ask them to come and uh, he never got back to me. So I, I guess that didn't work either. Uh, I felt that that was a connection that we should uh, use and it, it didn't work. So I, I also spoke to someone um, that was at the meeting in December, um, uh, Michael Kona, uh, he's a uh, senior analyst. I asked him a lot of questions because he said, oh, again, they're not coming. And they gave me company answers. I didn't really learn very much from it. And if they came, I think that they would do the same thing to us at a meeting and not answer truthfully. They are just not an agency that works with the community. They do their own thing. And that's really all I have to say. Well, authorities are notorious for that. You know, they, 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 they're governed under 
uh, the CEQA said they don't have to come and the, uh, the uh, SCA law uh, gives them the powers of God. Um, it's just the arrogance of, uh, of authorities. Thank you, yeah. Sylvia. Chuck? Laura, yeah. um, let me make the points. I agree with everything Sylvia said. Mm -hmm. I want to make one point, uh, two points. One, what I will do is I will be in touch with the president of the United Federation of Teachers, which we represent, and see if he can put the heat on them to do something. I'm not hopeful that that will happen. I'm hopeful, but I'm not confident that there's a shot, but I will have a conversation. Thank you, Chuck. The second piece of this is something that I think is something we need to say for them. Let's see if they honor the letter. If not, I propose, if the board approves, to draft a piece of legislation taking SCA and making it a state responsibility and get rid of the folks who are running it now. It's just a bunch of irresponsible people. Now, there are very few people who can say that as authoritatively as I can, because I used to represent them. They're just bad folk. Um, any other hands? Then we'll move on to the next topic. Why, uh, there are Laura, hands Laura up. there are several hands up. Oh, why, why aren't I seeing it? Oh, I'm wow. sorry. You know what? I didn't have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was surprised. No hands. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have Marty, then Bob, then David, then Rosemary. Okay. Marty. I'm so sorry. Strikes me, strikes me that we have little or no legal status with respect to SCA, but the uh, Education Council of District 10 probably has status. And we must be working with and through, not through them, but with them. And if they're not aware yet about what we went through last night, they ought to be. And we should make that avenue available to us. It's a good point. I, I spoke uh, with Marty. I, I, spoke, I spoke to the uh, head of the uh, uh, CEC and, and uh, about the SCA. And they had a situation on Webster Avenue where they were uh, allowed to get like a handout uh, because the the um, the head of the C, uh, EC, C, EC, yeah, um, fought with them. But but you know, nobody can get anything out of the SCA. I mean, it's like getting blood out of a stone. Uh, it, it isn't just a matter of uh, pressure. And it isn't, uh, they, they know exactly what they're able to do and what they're not able to do. And I don't think that uh, pressure uh, from elected officials or anyone else is going to change the way they feel about their particular work. But I still think it's beneficial for us to join forces. Absolutely. Sylvia and I discussed that today uh, about bringing in the, the education district 10 people. Yeah, definitely. Uh, thank you. Uh, Bob? Yeah, thank you, Laura. Uh, a few things. I mean, first of all, I, I want to thank uh, our land use chair for um, emphasizing the importance of affordable housing. I, I do want to point out that uh, the community board historically has issued a district needs statement, although I haven't seen one for the last couple of years. And affordable housing has been number one on our district needs statement for the last several years that we have posted it. So uh, it, is, it is a hugely important issue. With regard to the question of uh, who said the SCA was coming back to uh, talk to us, it was the SCA who said they were coming back to talk to no, us. No, they did not. Yes, I'm they sorry. did, Sylvia. Yes, they did. And uh, it, it clearly, uh, they knew what they were doing because they had no plans to come back to talk to us until after everything that they needed to do was done. Uh, you know, we, uh, some of us were not sophisticated enough or, or more uh, accurately knowledgeable enough to realize how the whole process played out and when it was necessary for SCA to come back to us if we were truly going to have any input into the process. Uh, and unfortunately, that's, you know, that's what we didn't realize. On the, on the question of 
the playground on the roof, they exist all over. Uh, they're in public schools and they're in private schools. Uh, there are fences all around uh, to protect the children. You know, that's this is not a new concept. This has been done many times. But uh, the, the area that is reserved for the school on this site map, now that we've seen it with the with the housing in place, uh, is uh, what, what we saw last night was, uh, as far as I was concerned, stunning. I mean, this is a really big project, housing project, residential project, and it and it dwarfs the school. And there is uh, hardly any open space for the school. And in hindsight, I realized that the fact that this whole presentation was bifurcated. First, we had SEA come in and tell us about the school. And then last night, we have uh, Tishman come in and tell us about the, the uh, housing project. It, it's really a shame that we didn't have this all at one time because it really would have clarified the whole situation and made clear just how small a component the school is on this site. And, and that's what I really regret is that we didn't have uh, a unified presentation in the beginning. I wish we had had that because, uh, you know, what we saw last night just completely changed my perception of, of what we're dealing with here. So, uh, you know, I, I regret having seen that. Uh, you know, th there are so many things that in hindsight, I wish we had done differently, but, you know, we are where we are and we're going to have to deal with it at this point and, and try to find the way forward. Thank you. Laura, may, may I just add a footnote to what Bob has said? Bob, they did not sign the easement documents until a few weeks ago, nor did Title mm -hmm. I suspect what was going on here, based on what I've seen of the paperwork, is that there was a thought at the beginning that the uh, acquiring entity would be the city uh, and SCA, um, and it would deal with the residential, and they were just outflanked, and the archdiocese really probably didn't want to do, deal with the city, uh, would rather deal with Tishman Spy. It's just my guess, it's a pure guess, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Um, the bottom line is, we were outflanked by SCA coming in prematurely. We should not have had them in until we we're ready for all the pieces. Lesson learned. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Um, they uh, they will come back during design, site plans, uh, construction later on. Later, later. They, that's when they said they will come back. So uh, it, it's frustrating. Uh, David. Yes, thank you. Um, I've not been involved with this, you know, way back when, when, you know, we've been asking for uh, a school for, for apparently many years, uh, but I fully support it. Um, my impression uh, by looking at the diagrams presented to us by SCA was that they, that the school was gonna take about half of the uh, lot and that there was gonna be sort of an L shape of a school with a, uh, an open area uh, on, at, um, I think uh, the, that side street, I forget the name right now. Um, and that that uh, lot was, that uh, open area was gonna be about 2,500 square feet. And as I noted last night, 2,500 square feet is the size of a basketball court. And to um, get all the kids together before class or, you know, uh, before school starts in the morning and get 738 kids on a basketball court, that's not gonna happen. And to use it as a recess area for, say, a quarter at a time, say 150, 200 kids to play ball or run around, play tag, uh, you know, during recess sessions, that's uh, way too uh, little. And now seeing uh, the diagrams last night, it suggests that the school is going to be about a quarter to a third of the lot. And just hearing uh, now this notion that um, there's going to be an easement that'll be primarily for the kindergarten class. And this makes it worse and worse and worse every stage along the way. I think that this lot could be a decent school or a de decent affordable housing lot, but it can't be both. And I think we need to uh, press 
our electeds and whatever leverage we can muster to uh, get this thing radically changed. I'd love to see a school, but not on a, a third of that lot, either 100% of that lot, or let's uh, figure out a way to do it, to go somewhere else. I, I don't have that answer, but this uh, one third school, two thirds um, housing is just not tenable. It doesn't serve the community in any sense. And that's our job. Thank you. It, it, it isn't even 25%. No, uh, it's, so it's even worse. It's 0. 0.5, it's a half acre, tiny bit more than half an acre for the school. Um, uh, Rosemary. It, it, and how, okay. I'm sorry, how big is the overall lot then? About two acres. All right, so it's 25%, yeah, okay. Thank you. I just told you that. Uh, Rosemary? Okay, th thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I repeat a number of things I said last night and try and make it as short as I can, but uh, it's clear there's a lot going on on this block. This is a significant block. I think it, when you think of our entire community board, there is no block in our entire community board that is having development proposed as, as big and as dense as this. Think about it. it, it it's it's un, unbelievable. Um, uh, so while there's a lot going on in the block, um, I don't think people have issues with the uses. The use school, the use housing and affordable housing, nobody's objecting to the use. It's, but the devil is always in the details. It is way too dense. It is way too packed. It is way they are jamming too much into this one block. And this is gonna have a major effect on this community and this neighborhood, major. Um, it, it, you know, I looked at the, just the housing proposal last night. I, it took my breath away. So it took my breath. I, it, those of you who didn't see it, uh, I, I hope you get to see the picture of what is being proposed. It is lot line like to the, lot line to like lot that, line. Looks like the Pentagon. Yeah. It is lot line to lot line to lot line. You cannot find one blade of grass in, in, in a, facing the community for this housing. It is gigantic and dense. It, it's, uh, it's unbelievable to the point where, and we did not get as we usually get some zoning information on a building. Uh, now I'll turn to Chuck. We usually get some zoning information. It is so dense. I'm wondering if they didn't take some air rights off of the school site. There's something else going on on this site. It's too uh, dense. It's too packed. And we deserve a full presentation on both items. Now, uh, to, to uh, uh, kind of uh, harken back to, to what Bob Bender said, I wish we had seen them together. It's not too late, Bob. It's not too late. There should be a hearing. There should be a public presentation whether SCA shows up or not, but a public presentation of everything that is going on in this site. I said this last night, maybe no one will listen to me. It is my dream. Th this community should see and be able to ask questions about everything that is going on in that site. The community needs to hear and be able to ask questions. I, I don't know what else we're doing here on a community board. You know, to, to have, uh, you know, someone who lives in New Jersey sit on a committee and ask questions uh, 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 to um, uh, Rodney uh, doesn't do it. That, that's the, the, we, we, the community has a right to see this and, and be able to ask questions. Uh, so uh, I will, I, I just, just, just to finish, I, I want to just ask this of, of Laura and Kira, is the negative deck on our website? Is the SCA presentation as small as it was? Is that on our website? And is the Tishman Spire presentation from last night on our website? I would recommend that those three things be put on our website and that somehow when we advertise, it is my hope that we advertise the community to come and see a presentation and ask questions that those things are there that they're able to click into and see. Um, I'm done. Thank you. Mary, Thank uh, you. Kira, yes, report on the website. Yeah, sure. Um, so the NEG deck is on our website. We actually took one of the um, 
comments last night. We're going to move it over to our home page away from the committee page because I think it's hard to find. And I'm waiting on the Tishman Spire presentation and that will also be updated on the website. Just so everyone knows, and I wasn't able to present on this last night, as I do for all land use meetings, we mailed the agenda to the neighboring properties. And we also, Laura actually last Friday posted flyers around that community with a QR code that linked to the Zoom meeting. So we did do some outreach on this um, and Rosemary point taken, we're gonna be moving these items over to our homepage where it's easier to, for people to find. Um, my end is, I have a question. Um, my understanding from what I read is that it's as of right, R7-1, the zone. We don't no. have any zoning calculations, so I can't tell okay. you. Okay, that's what was in the, uh, somewhere in the neck deck of the things that I read, that that, uh, the housing part was R7-1. Right. As, of, as, of right, as of right means you don't need a discretionary action to change something. Right, right, right. There are things that, that we don't stop. vote on anything, right? I but mean, there are building, we should be aware of it. There were building department shenanigans that can go on about zoning lots and how you define a zoning lot. That, it, there, there are things that can be done that are not considered discretionary actions. We, we, That's above my pay grade. <laughs> okay, well, just, but just know that there is something above your pay grade. There is something oh, that yeah. can occur, whether they say it's as of right or not. What they mean is there's no discretionary action required. If there were, honey, if there were, you would have had to have an environmental review. And when those two sites are side by side, and I said this at the education meeting, there would be, be a thing called cumulative impact. And the, the e, e, EAS, EAS review ha, would have to have been done together because there's a cumulative impact of those two things occurring. That's why they're saying it as of right. That's why they're not going for a discretionary action. Is that why they split it into I, two lots? I, I, don't, one lot. I, I don't think this site, I think this site, if it went through an environmental review together, would be subject to a full EIS. That is my opinion. That is my opinion. Opinion. And uh, I, I'm sorry, I get I get really really angry. At no, no, uh, we're all, Laura, we're all it, very Laura. There was no accident that we do not have any of the basic zoning information okay. from the school or other. Well, that's why I asked because I read that. I I I, I read that the site, let and I I will have to a basic yeah points one. I think we can be very clear about the fact this community needs, the city needs, the state needs more uh, really affordable housing, not the crap that's being peddled as affordable housing that's only affordable to people down there. All right. That's number one. Number two, it's very clear that this was a shell game. Very clear to me, we were snookered. And that I deeply resent. I don't mind if people take me for a fool, but if they believe I'm a fool, then they got a problem. Number two, number three, we have got an issue here that is of enormous long-term importance. If you now look at the area, you see a demographic change in the works. And Kelly, by the way, those stoplights around this area and those traffic lights become of even heightened importance because of this project, the things that were on the various uh, requests. We have had, over the course of the past year, application after application in the Bailey Avenue area and to the east of it that is going to change the nature and character of that community in terms of what is being proposed to be put up. Now, that is something that people need to start watching and start thinking. That's something that the um, you know, uh, equity committee has got to start looking at. Is this something that's in the public interest? We've got to do, take a look at the people who spoke last night. Those were not people who were well-loaded in funds and the like. They were people who 
worked awfully hard for a living, put their savings into the little homes that are in that area or apartments, and they are going to now have the shock of their lives. That's not right, not right. So we've got to have those issues looked at. I honestly, urgently beg Margaret if she can put this on her agenda as to where you want to come out here. I will tell you, it takes no more than three to five years to change the nature and character of a community of that size and dimension. And if that's in the public interest in the view of people, that's in their interest. I don't know. But I will tell you, the people who live there now and who've invested their life savings in it, they're my first priority. You well, got I don't know how we could lower this footprint here of the housing and increase the school. And, uh, you know, this is this is very, very tough. Um, thank, thank you, Chuck. I see Camelia, your hand is up. Oh, yeah, sorry, just a very practical suggestion. Um, because I feel like one of the, our most important duties is to inform the public. So if possible, during the actual full board meeting, I mean, I took here a screenshot that I'm showing you in my camera of that, just that single slide showing the plan. Chuck was perfectly correct in uh, comparing it with a Pentagon. Uh, the sort of the little purple bottom side of the Pentagon is a school and you can see how it's being dwarfed by all the, the four other sides of the Pentagon. I mean, in this depiction, it literally touches it <laughs> so it's 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 something absolutely of pharaonic uh, uh, proportion here um, so if just just wanted to suggest if possible for that single slide to be shared in the full board if possible for everybody to be sort of informed people that were not in the in the land use and also just to add 70 percent of all the affordable of all units of this of this uh, huge building will be studios and one bedroom, 70%. Um, so there will be, um, how to say, the impact, impact on the traffic uh, would be so much higher because these are units that are not sort of families, right? Somebody was asking how many people can live legally in a one bedroom, in a studio, et cetera, et cetera. 70% of them will be uh, studios and, and one bedrooms. That's all I, I kind of wanted to add just with the suggestion of having that, that picture showed in full board if possible on this. Thank you. Yeah, Kira, you got that? Yes. Okay. I now, think that's a good idea. Can Thank I go you. to the balance of my land use report, please? Sure. It absolutely ties in. There are three buildings on Kingsbridge Road. The, Kira, to her great credit, picked up as becoming a real problem. I don't remember the numbers offhand. I'm sure Kira can pick it up from the agenda from last night. One of the buildings started this process because there were a constant flood of complaints of quality of life issues coming out of this building. The second building, and that's a building that's built. The second thing, is not yet built. There are plans filed and the building department said, no way, no how. And there was a pavement project for that, that was turned down. And the third one, building department's been trying to get hold of the landlord since March 30th to try and find out. Turns out all three buildings are the same owner. And we asked him to come he did not answer. Kira got on him, pushed him hard, did a great job of doing that. He showed up toward the end of the meeting and has now agreed to a schedule of doing various things. If he does it, I will be happier than a pig in you know what. Will he do it? I have no clue. But this is a problem. The one leverage we have is he is a licensed real estate broker. And his license is subject to review by the Secretary of State's office. So there, there is some leverage. But uh, this is a big, this is in the same catchment area that I was talking about a few minutes ago. Notice again, the change happening within that area. 
He says he's going to rebuild it. Definitely. I know Kira leaned on him very hard to get him to show up. Many, many emails and, uh, uh, well, let's see if he comes back in October with the things he's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Chuck, for all that. Um, are there any other, let me get myself correct here. I, are there any other hands under our, the rest of our agenda? Okay, seeing no hands, I uh, ask. Oh, actually. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, Lisa. Well, just really quick, to, since David brought it up, uh, there will be, a, or there might be, a, a SAPO application at the Aging Committee meeting. Uh, because uh, it's uh, Mosaic Mental Health wants to hold a block party, a health and wellness block party on the 17th. So that's why it's on the aging committee. So we could vote at the board meeting. Uh, the problem is the location, uh, or it might be a problem. Um, it's 232nd Street between Henry Hudson Parkway and Fairfield, which is the street that goes uh, over the highway. Right, and so then it continues from Henry Hudson Parkway. I'm, I'm guessing it's Henry Hudson Parkway east to Fairfield. Um, the board office has been trying to reach Mosaic. I left a message myself later this afternoon and we'll just try to speak with them just to make sure that the location is what was on the application. So we'll get back to everyone and we just wanna make sure that they'll appear at the aging committee. And that's it. Thank you, Lisa. Um, having no further business, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, Laura. I, I had an item too that I asked about. Oh, okay, before. your hand wasn't up. I see. I'm both. sorry. Yeah, you're okay. right. I wasn't sure on which point you were. <laughs> right. Okay, Camelia. Yeah, just one second. I don't know why my video is not starting, but. Um, Okay. Uh, yeah. So um, I'm sorry. I'm holding everyone. Um, you know, but I I promise you I will be very concise and and clear. I hope. Um, it is an issue on which I will speak in general uh terms, but I do feel like it's an issue that uh is very relevant as far as Cree and just sort of general equity. Um. There is, um, how to say, chairs have the ability to limit the size of their committees according to our uh, bylaw section six, uh, sorry, article six, section uh, two. Um, in which case there could be situations where people that wanted to join a committee uh, may, be, um, may be denied essentially, because uh, if a chair limits the size of the committee saying I only want five people, but seven people want to join. So then it's a question of how, how to say, choosing those two that will be denied the um, membership essentially. So I think there is not clarity in our bylaws as far as how that process would take place. And of course, uh, one could argue that the chair has discretion in sort of picking and choosing, but um, that discretion is not written in the bylaws. And also I think that discretion sort of makes the board vulnerable to, well, discriminations on simply or simply decisions being made out of the personal likes and dislikes of a particular chair. Imagine, oh, uh, you know, there were, there were maybe votes against, you know, certain things or all chairs will simply choose to line up uh, people that, that think the same uh, and not allow membership to a person that maybe thinks differently. Or anyway, you understand, it's an issue of personal uh, choice, essentially. So I think I would like to suggest for um, exact consideration uh, an amendment to the bylaws. Uh, and yes, I will raise it to Allery and anybody else that, that would need to, um, to give me feedback on this, uh, that that decision to exclude um, members that want to join a committee should be made in an um, equitable, objective, transparent, and randomized process, sort of like a lottery, names in a head. I only want a committee of five, so, and I have seven people wanting to be in the committee. Who do I pick out? You pick out two numbers listed alphabetically, where those two numbers, instead of having um, you know, a chair being sort of accused that plays favorites, discriminates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the sentence I, uh, I wrote um, 
refers to section two, article six. Uh, it now contains the sentence, the committee chairpersons in consultation with the chairperson of the board shall determine the size and membership of each committee. And this is my suggestion. When a committee chair decides to limit the size of a committee in a situation of oversubscription, committee membership shall be determined by using an equitable, objective, transparent, and randomized process administered under the supervision of the board chair. Um, I know there was a situation in the past where a member was denied membership. There is a situation this year essentially on the table. Um, maybe not everybody will be in the situation of the member sort of whose membership is being questioned uh, this year, uh, but I don't, I wouldn't want this to happen to anybody in the future, especially um, kind of given the composition of our community board. And I'm saying this with absolutely sort of the best of, of intentions and positive thinking. I don't think that chairs have discretion in choosing their members. I think we are all volunteers here and we are appointed either by uh, our council person or um, borough's, um, borough president's office. And no, if I don't like a person, I cannot deny her membership. I am now in a committee of three. If two more people want to join, I cannot say no, I don't like Rosemary and Kelly, sorry, just examples, but just to make the absolute sort of point that it, that it is like that, right? Like I like Robert, Deb and myself. And if Rosemary and Kelly want to join, I say, no, I only want a, mem a committee of three. No, Rosemary, no, no, Kelly, no. I'm saying it should be a lottery. I pick from, you know, a hat to names and I say, yeah, so, you know, it was a, an equitable process is all I'm saying. So just wanted to bring this to everybody's attention. I do feel like it's a thing that could, could lead to sort of negative negative um, development. Um, and I hope that you don't, you know, kill me. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, anyway, thank just you. wanted to open it yeah. up in, and gather your thoughts and just thank you for listening. Thank you, Kameen. Thank you. Um, Rosemary, and then David, and then Marty. Okay, now that Camille is finished, yes? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, so I, I just like to, I just like to um, raise, uh, there was a, a, a big important vote last year on CSX um, and um, it, you'll all remember the vote, the board overwhelmingly voted for it. I had a number of objections and questions and the Public Development Corporation held a hearing and uh, I just want to highlight and, and I think you, uh, 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 Laura, sent out the, um, the uh, text of it, the, uh, of what occurred at PDC. Just about everything I said, the PDC commissioners restated. They were not happy with the landscape architect, that is just a staff member at Hazen and Sawyer. They were not happy that the northern part in Van Cortlandt Park, which is beautiful, does not speak to the southern part, which is the peace in the community that I've talked about, that I care about, that we should care about. Uh, they uh, did. They talked about a need for uh, new criteria, better criteria, some innovation. There should be. There's no innovation in the design that was presented to them. Uh, they talk about how a linear park is a challenge, which it is, but the High Line did it. The High Line accomplished what a linear park could be and what could be done. They are worried about the 10 feet. Remember, I called it a sidewalk and that's what it is. Uh, and they are not happy with the 10 feet at all. They also say the Southern end falls off. There's no end to this. Um, so it, 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 at the end, the commissioner said, rethink this. They said, rethink this, folks, because they didn't like what they saw. I am I'm asking, I am begging you that this was sent out. Please listen to what the commissioners uh, asked. Um, this is a very significant project for this community. And, um, and, and my last point, it is my sincere hope that we're going to have committees of this board at least bring bring forward right now what happened at PDC and where they intend to go, what they intend to do to respond to the PDC um, uh, comments and criticisms. Uh, again, the community board should play a major role in this project. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Rosemary. Uh, David. 
Uh, yes, thank you. Um, uh, next Tuesday's board meeting, in theory, is our last um, uh, Zoom meeting. You know, with there's speculation as to whether this process may be extended again, but at this point, we must assume it is our last one. Uh, I just wanted to encourage uh, either uh, you, Laura, or uh, Kira to underscore for the um, the board members next Tuesday that uh, if we do go into a hybrid mode and members want to dial in, so to speak, to a meeting, their cameras must be on to be counted for attendance. Um, there's been, you know, a lot of people who have been, you know, shutting off their cameras uh, through these last two and a half years. But I think we really need to remind uh, board members that they are required to have their cameras on during the meeting as an attendee. I attend other committee meetings that I'm not a member of the committee and I often leave my camera off. But if uh, you want to be counted in your uh, attendance, you have to keep your camera on. And I think it's worthwhile for either or both of you to remind everybody on Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Marty. Uh, I'm hoping now that Camelia is a, uh, a chair herself, she'll appreciate that items such as she wishes to raise have to go through a committee first and not be brought up with the executive as a surprise. That's it. Thank you, Marty. Um, Bob Bender. Yeah, I just I just wanted to uh, comment on what Rosemary said. Um, the uh, the community board has been very much involved so far in what's going on with the extension of the Putnam and the Tibbetsbrook daylighting. Uh, the Parks and ENS committees have twice held joint committee meetings on this subject. And uh, I know that the Parks Committee is going to continue to follow this issue as it moves forward. What the PDC saw was a conceptual design. And I know that both Parks and DEP have uh, uh, gone back to uh, uh, their designs to uh, refine their designs. Uh, in light of what they were, uh, what the in light of the discussion that took place at the public design commission meetings, so uh, the input from the community board will continue as this process moves forward. I just want to reassure everybody about that, and thank you for bringing it up, Rosemary. Thank you, Bob. Uh, just very briefly, we got an update from the Tibbetts Advisory Group today that they're going back to the drawing board and that they've hired a landscape architect to join their team. Correct. Yes, um, that came in today and it will be distributed. I haven't, thank you, David. I haven't even had the opportunity today to look at it. I was so into the- You've been busy? Construction. <laughs> um, but yeah, I looked at that and I said, oh, it, it really should be distributed. All the comments are good. Um, and um, thank everybody for their support. And remember, we're all volunteers and we're working uh, you know, as much as we can in this capacity. And uh, now I will say, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay, so I wanna wish everybody a very good night. I wanna thank everybody. Um, the new our new year is gearing up and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna work hard. Okay, everybody have a great night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.